Hi everyone, my name is Maria Santiago and I'm here with my digital story on Horse Sets New York. I wanted to provide some information as to why we are in Horse Sets New York. Uh, this is not the district that I grew up in. It's actually my first year teaching in Horse Heads, but as a probationary teacher, I felt passionate that this would be the most beneficial to me moving forward in my career. So that is why I selected Horse Heads as my focus district for this project. Where is Horse Heads? And so you can see on this map that Geneseo is all the way to the left of our map. And you can see based on the pin that Horse Heads is actually loaded, located nearly directly south of Cuca Lake. And it is nestled between Corning and it's fairly close to Ithaca. It looks farther away on the map, but it's a good distance away. And those are kind of some of the landmark cities that people refer to when talking about Horse Heads. So even though the actual village of Horse Heads is incredibly small comparatively to some of the other uh, city schools or bigger schools in New York State. It actually is a fairly large district in comparison to um, some of the communities I've been in before. And that is because the, the district actually serves students living in the village and town of Horseheads, Big Flats, Veteran, Breezeport, Pine Valley, Erin, Millport, Cayuta, and Catlin. And the reason that they are serving so many villages and towns is because Shimon County actually only has three school districts and one of those is Horsehead Central School. And so in order to serve, it, serve all of those students who are living in Shimon County, they have to be sent somewhere and a lot of those villages and towns are too small to support a school district on their own. And so Horseheads, even though it's a small village, actually is a fairly large district because of all of the communities that it supports around it. When looking at the demographics of Horseheads, the split between genders in the district is actually right on par with the New York State Standard, which is 51% male and 49% female. But where we do see the greatest disparity in these statistics when looking at uh, Horseheads data versus New York State data is within the ethnicities of our students. And so as evidenced here, we can see that 87% of the population is white or Caucasian. And that is drastically different from New York State, which as a whole, New York State says that 43% of students are Caucasian or white. And so it's a very uniform and um, fairly lacking diversity um, school district. And we can see that in our student population. Within our school district, we have Horseheads High School, which serves students 9th through 12th grade. We also have the middle school and intermediate school, which are part of the same building, but are considered two separate entities. The middle school serving students 7th and 8th grade and the intermediate school serving students 5 and 6. Big Flats Elementary is found in the village of Big Flats and that serves students pre-K through 4. Center Street is an elementary school serving students pre-K through 4. Gardner Road is also an elementary school serving students pre-K through 4. And lastly, Ridge Road is also a pre-K through 4 building in our district. Where students are sent for elementary school is dependent upon their location within the district, and they are sent to the nearest elementary school based on their current address. One thing that you will notice if you visit the Horsehead Central School District right now is that particularly around our high school, there is a great deal of construction going on, and that's because in 2017, it was approved a, a a capital project was approved to renovate and upgrade the schools, transportation department, and various grounds around the schools. And this was a $94.7 million project that passed. And so one of the big areas that we're currently seeing this is in Horsets High School. And so you can see based on this image that a lot is being done to improve the building itself for students. But also as stated in the um, in the previous slide, 
Uh, these renovations extend to the grounds as well. And so one other place that we were able to see some improvement was in some sports facilities. And as I'll talk about a little bit more later on, sports are a huge part of the culture and the values of the students of Horseheads. And so this was a tremendous thing for the students to see such an incredible um, upgrade to their field for football and for soccer. As I just said, sports are so important to the culture of the students and to their community. And so one of the huge ones across the students, not only lacrosse, but also baseball. And so the picture here is a field that I've sat at many games so far this year to watch a few of my students who are huge baseball fans and huge baseball, fantastic baseball players. And so this is one of the important fields, not only to my students, but also to me. And finally, I wanted to wrap up with looking at my focus school, which is Horseheads Intermediate School. So as you can see by this picture, this serves grades five and six, and this is where I currently teach. And so you can see, this is a picture of my classroom. Uh, this is my sixth grade classroom. You can see lots of books. I actually teach math and science, but this is my favorite place in the world right now. I also selected this school, and I'm so proud of this school because of the importance that they place on play and um, I see that across all of the classrooms is that play time is really valuable to the students and to the teachers and so we have really I think we have a great playground facility it could definitely be changed to be more inclusive to students who are disabled um, but thankfully that is not an issue right now but I think that those that would be an incredible renovation to take on would be making this a more inclusive playground a couple of the resources that I wanted to highlight are Tanglewood Nature Center and Museum, which is very close. It's in Elmira, but it's a really, really short drive. And as you'll see in my Google site, this is a tremendous resource that is utilized a lot by different teachers, whether it be in science, they sometimes will incorporate social studies standards into this. But lots of fifth grade teachers especially will take field trips here and then create huge projects around this and it really motivates the students. We also are close to Elmira, which means that the Mark Twain study is a resource that many teachers talk about, but actually my partner teacher um, completes an author study each year with the students and he takes the kids to the Mark Twain study and they have a picnic every year and he said it's their favorite thing and it's the highlight of every kid's year. And lastly, the last resource that I really wanted to highlight is the Historical Society Train Depot. Um, I haven't heard a lot about how historical societies are being used in the curriculum, but I think this would be such an incredible resource, especially for new teachers who maybe are having difficulty, such as me, in identifying and learning about the history of the community. A historical society is such an incredible resource that I think is not as utilized as it could be. And I would just like to wrap up by saying how excited I am to see your digital stories and to learn about your communities and see if any of that information can help me further my learning and further my investigation into my own community. Thank you for watching.